I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. How do they score as few points as possible? Well, they need to come up with the most obscure answers they can muster. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. Could you plumb the depths of your knowledge to find those elusive answers that no one else could think of? So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Disney animated feature films as they could, and we found out that... 71 of them said Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 71 points. However, only... 36 of them said Pinocchio, a less obvious film that would score you a respectably low 36 points. Occasionally, there are even some answers that none of our 100 people could name. So, for example, none of them said Brother Bear. So that would have been a truly pointless film. And that would score you... <laughs> absolutely nothing. See, that's just what you want. And if you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. So, let's start by meeting today's players. Rick and Anthony, welcome back. We gave everybody two chances to reach the Pointless final, and today is your final chance. Can you remind us where you're from and how you do know each other? Well, Anthony and I were professional musicians in the same band together. He joined in 1969. We've been best mates ever since. So remind us how you did last time. We didn't do too bad until we got to the modern question. I might have the figure, but we didn't have the answers. <laughs> Absolutely right, yes. Kylie Minogue did for you. Oh dear. Well, very best of luck to you this afternoon. Uh, on to our second pair, James and Joe. Welcome to the show. Uh, how do you two know each other? We are brother and sister. Who, who's the older one? Who's the younger one? Can I'm, I ask that? I'm the older one. Very good. I'm two years older. Okay. Who do you think is better at general knowledge and obscure facts? We'll tell you in about half an hour. <laughs> okay. Look forward to finding out. Uh, David and Jamie, you are our third pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? We uh, grew up in the same village uh, and we currently play on the same quiz team together. Very good. Where's the village? The village is in... Uh, we grew up in Shepley in, uh, in West Yorkshire, near Huddersfield. Well, best of luck to you this afternoon. Uh, and on to our fourth pair. We welcome back Matt and Dave. This is your second and final chance on Pointless. Remind us who you are. Um, well, this is my colleague Matt. We work together as accountants in Southampton. How did you get on in the last show? We got to the head-to-head, -head, so close, but not close enough. Very close, but not quite close enough. Well, better luck this afternoon. Let's hope you make it all the way to the final. And welcome back to Catherine and Deanne. This is your second and final time on the show too. Remind us how you two know each other. Uh, we are both teachers in the same school and Deanne is also the sound person for my band that I'm in. So you could put you and Rick and Anthony together afterwards. Very nice of you. You could play us out at the end of the show. No. In fact, could? You will. You will. <laughs> Well, best of luck for this afternoon. Of course, there is one final person I have to introduce to you all. He is the man with all the pointless facts and figures. He's my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> so, Richard, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? You, and only you, know what sort of show we have this afternoon. Yeah, I've got all the questions here. I've got all the answers here as well. Uh, at the end of each question, I'll be going through all the pointless answers. Those are the questions that none of our 100 people mentioned. So if you're playing along at home, you'll find out exactly how you've done there. I'll also go through some of the sort of obvious answers, uh, you know, the answers with loads and loads of points. Uh, I'll point out you don't know any of the answers on today's show no. or any of the questions. You're absolutely in the dark. Last time, Graham and Bob won the jackpot of £1,250, so today's jackpot total starts off again at £1,000. <laughs> but remember, if you find some pointless answers along the way, each one of those will add £250 to that amount. Let's play Pointless. So, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You'll score one point for every one of the 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is pointless. So you are trying to find the least well-known answers and score the fewest points. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points, so do be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer, this will happen. You really don't want to see that. At the end of the round, your combined score will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Only two pairs obviously can make it through to our head-to-head -head semi-final, so the pressure is really on. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Film. Film. 
OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many feature films starring Bruce Willis as they could. Richard, elaborate. Well, how many feature films do you think Bruce Willis has made nine. in his career? More than nine. Nineteen. Fifty-one. Oh. What we're looking for are feature films made for cinema release in which Bruce Willis is credited as an, as an actor. Uh, no TV films, no short films, uh, nothing that's yet to be released and nothing where he appears as himself, but uh, voice performances do count. Right, Rick and Anthony, before the show you all drew lots and today it turns out you will be starting us off. Rick, what's it going to be? I'll try and box clever. Die Hard 3. Die Hard 3. OK, remember, you are looking to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Die Hard 3. That's a correct answer. That means 46 out of our 100 people said Die Hard 3. Richard, Die Hard 3. Yeah, Die Hard 3, otherwise known as Die Hard with a Vengeance. On to our second pair. Joe, what are you going to say? Not really a fan of Bruce Willis' film, struggling to think of one, to be honest. Um, I'm going to say The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sixth Sense. It's good. Not bad. Really not bad. That means 15 of our 100 people said Sixth Sense. That gives Joe and James a nice early low score of 15. OK, Jamie and David, we are looking for feature films starring Bruce Willis. The more obscure, the better, remember? Seen as Die Hard 3 got a reasonable score. Tried Die Hard 4, hope people forgot about it. You're going to go with Die Hard 4. Yes. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Die Hard 4. Well, it's correct. It's not bad. That means 26 of our 100 people said Die Hard 4. That gives Jamie and David a score of 26. Richard, Die Hard 4. Yeah, Die Hard 4, or also otherwise known as Die Hard 4.0. OK, on to our fourth pair. Dave and Matt. Dave, what are you going to say? Um, I think Bruce Willis is in the film that I'm thinking of, and that film is Hostage. Hostage. OK, well, let's hope he is in that film. If he isn't, I'm afraid you will score the maximum of 100 points. But if he is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Hostage. It's good. Oh, it's very good. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> that means only one person out of our 100 people said hostage. Oh, it's almost cruel to be that close to a pointless, isn't it? But congratulations all the same. That's a great low score. And finally, on to our final pair. Catherine, we are looking for feature film starring Bruce Willis. Film that I've got on the tip of my tongue. I'm not even sure whether this is the name of it. So it's a massive gamble, this. But I'm just going to do it. Go on. I I th I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. I think this film is called Invincible. You think it's called Invincible? If it's a wrong answer, you will score 100 points. <laughs> Let's see. Invincible. Oh, oh bad man. luck. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer. That means you do score the maximum of 100 points. OK, well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at the scores on the board. Matt and Dave looking fantastic there with only one. That's a fantastically low score. Catherine and Deanne, you took a big gamble there. Bad luck, it didn't pay off, and you are now our highest scorers on 100. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? We are looking for feature films starring Bruce Willis, Deanne. I'll go with a gamble. I think you're going to have to. <laughs> and it'll be Toy Story. Toy Story. OK, if it is wrong, you will score another 100 points. Go out in a blaze of glory, why not? <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Toy Story. Ah! 
in a blaze of glory. Completely. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. You are now on 200 points. You did what you had to do. You know, in order to try and find a pointless, you've got to be as obscure as you possibly can. And that means you do sometimes risk of just being a little bit too obscure. So obscure it is, in fact, wrong. <laughs> um, so that means you will be the pair leaving at the end of this round because you are at 200. All our remaining pairs, even if they score the maximum possible of 100 points, they won't overtake your high score of 200. But, remaining pairs, I bet there are some pointless movies that Bruce Willis has made. If you can find them, each one will add £250 to our jackpot. So, moving on to our next pair. Matt, you are currently on one. You are safe. Give us a pointless Bruce Willis film. Um, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit this, but I do believe that uh, Bruce Willis was in a cameo at the start of Charlie's Angels 2, Full Throttle. <laughs> I really hope he is. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Charlie's Angels 2, Full Throttle. Oh, no! Um, he had part of a ring called Halo which was taken from him at the beginning of the film. I'm going to hand to the man with all the pointless facts and figures, Richard. He was briefly in at the beginning, but he's not credited. He's not credited as an actor in that film. He's, he's not credited? Uh, yeah, he's not credited, I'm afraid. I just say at the beginning it's got to be a film for which he is credited. OK. Anyway, that gives you a total of 101. OK, on to David and Jamie. We are looking, in case you'd forgotten, for feature film starring Bruce Willis. The more obscure, the better, but not that obscure. <laughs> I'm hoping it is going to be obscure. Um, I have a vague recollection, I think it was called this, was, it, was he in a film called Grand Champion? Grand Champion. Let's find out. How many of our 100 people said Grand Champion? Well, it's a correct answer. Well, it's good. It's very good. And it is a pointless. None of our 100 people said Grand Champion, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot, which now stands at £1,250. <laughs> well done. On to James and Joe. James, what are you going to say? Well, no pressure now following that. Um, <laughs> I think he was in Pulp Fiction. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Pulp Fiction. It's the right answer. Good. Very good. That means seven of our 100 people said Pulp Fiction. That brings your total up to 22. Anthony, we are looking, in case you'd forgotten, for feature film starring Bruce Willis. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Is it either The Last Boy Scout or The Last Man Standing? You're going to have to pick one, because I can't, I'm afraid. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I know, it's unfair. Oh, it's unfair. <laughs> Oh. Let's go for definitely unbreakable then. <laughs> You're going to go for <laughs> unbreakable. Unbreakable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said unbreakable. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Look at that. Oh, fantastic. Good work, Anthony. That means six of our 100 people said unbreakable. That brings your total up to 52. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Catherine and Deanne. Bad luck. That was really bad luck. That I mean, was you were... the one I meant. That was, it, was, it was there, and I could see it on a poster. <laughs> I still meant Toy Story, though. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Richard, what should they have said? Uh, I think Unbreakable is what you meant by Invincible, yeah. and yet it was Tom Hanks and Tim Allen who plays uh, Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story. Now, Anthony, when you were going for a, a, a pointless then, you mentioned Last Man Standing. If you'd said that, you'd have added £250 to the jackpot. That was a pointless answer. And, of course, pointless answers are those answers that none of our 100 people gave. It's a whole lot of uh, pointless Bruce Willis movies. Who knew? <laughs> Let's take a look at a few of them. Uh, assassination of a High School President. Mm -hmm. uh, Hearts War. What Just Happened, which is that was uh, out last year, where he refuses to shave off his beard. Breakfast of Champions, Colour of Night, and uh, we've had Grand Champion, which is a fantastic answer. Should we take a look at the, the worst answers you could have come up with? Fourth worst answer was Die Hard 4. The third worst answer is Die Hard with a Vengeance, Die Hard 3. Second worst answer, Die Hard 2. And I wish I could say that this wasn't the case, but it is Die Hard 1. The worst answer of all, the worst answer you could have given. Well, there we are. Thanks, Rich. Catherine and Diane, that was your second and final chance on the show. You clearly just don't have that pointless Bruce Willis knowledge you needed to get through to the final. So I'm afraid we have to say goodbye, but thank you so much for playing.
For the remaining four pairs, though, it's time for round two. OK, guys, the round two category is... Literature. Literature. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Now, remember, Pointless is all about scoring the fewest points possible, so you have to rack your brains for those obscure and unheard-of answers that you think the fewest of our 100 people said. With that in mind, let's find out what the question is for round two. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Shakespeare comedies as they could. Can you be any more specific, Richard? Yeah, I can see we're all laughing already, thinking of some of the one-liners uh, that guy came up with. We're looking for <laughs> any of the plays uh, listed in Shakespeare's first folio of 1623 under comedies. So we're not looking for tragedies like Romeo and Juliet or histories like uh, Richard III, just one of the, the comedies. There are 14 in the first folio. Thanks, Richard. Rick and Anthony, you are starting us off. Shakespeare comedies, Rick. We'll have a stab at Taming of the Shrew. Taming of the Shrew. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Taming of the Shrew. It's a correct answer. It's good. Very good. That means 16 of our 100 people said Taming of the Shrew. That kicks Rick and Anthony off with a lovely low score of 16 to start our second round. James and Joe. James, Shakespeare comedies. What are you going to give me? I'll have a, a complete stab in the dark at A Midsummer Night's Dream. Let's see how many of our 100 people have said Midsummer Night's Dream. It's a correct answer. <laughs> Not bad. That means 46 of our 100 people said A Midsummer Night's Dream. OK, Jamie, yes. what are you going to give me? Um, well, I'm not strictly sure it's a comedy, but they must be quite merry, so I'm going to go for The Merry Wives of Windsor. Let's see how many of our 100 people said The Merry Wives of Windsor. Down it goes, it's good. It's very good. Well done, Jamie. That means only five of our 100 people said the Merry Wives of Windsor. <clears throat> On to our final pair, Dave. We are looking for Shakespeare comedies. What are you going to say? I'm going to say Twelfth Night. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Twelfth Night. That's a correct answer. It's another good one. Very good, that means 10 of our 100 people said 12th night, and we are now halfway through the round. Let's see how we're doing on the scoreboard. Well, David and Jamie are looking fantastically strong there on five. Keep up that low scoring and you'll definitely be through to the next round. James and Joe on 46. You're way ahead there. You're going to be very vulnerable. You've got to try and score as low as you possibly can, Joe, on the next pass and hope everyone else scores high. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Will the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Matt, we are looking for Shakespeare comedies. You are currently on 10. The high scorers at the moment are Joe and James on 46. So if you want to avoid becoming the high scorers, and risk being eliminated at the end of the round, your target is 35 or less. I'm going for one which I've not read, but I believe is a comedy, and I think it... Well, I know it's As You Like It. As You Like It. There is the red line, below that red line, and you are straight through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said As You Like It. It's good. It's good. You're safe. That means 25 out of our 100 people said as you like it. That takes your total up to 35. You're definitely in the next round. OK, David, you are currently on five. The high scorers are still Joe and James on 46. You have to score 40 or less if you want to avoid becoming the new high scorers. We are looking for Shakespeare comedies. Um, I don't know if it's a comedy, but I'll go for Coriolanus. OK, if it is a wrong answer, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Coriolanus. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, Coriolanus. Uh, yeah, David, Coriolanus, I'm afraid, is a tragedy, particularly for you. That's, uh, that's bad luck. <laughs> so that gives you a score of 105. 
Okay, Joe and James, you've been thrown a lifeline by David and Jamie there. You were the highest scorers on 46. To avoid becoming the highest scorers again, you have to score 58 or less with this answer. We are looking for Shakespeare comedies, Joe. What are you going to give me? I'm going to say all's well that ends well. Let's see how many of our 100 people said all's well that ends well. You're through. It's good. Oh. <laughs> that means only two people out of our 100 said all's well that ends well. That brings your total up to 48. OK, Anthony, you are currently on 16. To avoid being thrown off at the end of the round, you want to be scoring 88 or less. Anything over that, and you would overtake David and Jamie's high score of 105. We are looking for Shakespeare comedies. The Merry Widow. The Merry Widow. Mm -hmm. If it is incorrect, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. The Merry Widow. Oh. Yeah. Bad luck. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. That's great news for David and Jamie. <laughs> Richard, the Merry Widow. It sounds like the sort of thing he would have written, but yeah. uh, it, he didn't. <laughs> and uh, it sounds like the Merry Wives of Windsor. Just it does so sound like a lot it. like the Merry Wives of Windsor. It starts with the Merry W. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that in common. Yeah. What answers should they have gone for if they'd wanted yeah, to stay there were, uh, there were a few obscure answers. There was one pointless answer, Winter's Tale. Winter's Tale was the, was the pointless one. Measure for Measure would have got you one point, and The Two Gentlemen of Verona got you two points, uh, which is the same as Joe's All's Well That Ends Well, which is a brilliant answer. Uh, the worst answer you could have given, uh, as so often we've already had a couple of them, uh, Much Ado About Nothing was, was, was the third worst. Uh, and then Matt gave us As You Like It, and then James gave us uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream, but saved by Joe, so uh, it, All's Well That Ends Well there. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Uh, Rick and Anthony, sadly, that was your second and final chance on the show. You just didn't have that pointless Shakespearean knowledge you needed to get through to the finals. I'm afraid we have to say goodbye, but thanks so much for playing. Thank you. For the remaining three pairs, though, it's time for round three. Now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is sport. There you are, sport. So who's going to go first, who's going to go second? I'm going first. And whoever's going first, will they please step up to the podium? Right, let's find out what the question's going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many FIFA World Cup winners and runners-up as they could. Richard. Fill in the blanks. Yeah, this is any team who've appeared in a FIFA World Cup final. That's just the final since 1930. OK. Remember, you need to score the fewest points. So you need to give the answer that the fewest of our 100 people said. Joe, you are first up. Come on. Let's find a really obscure finalist in the FIFA World Cup. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they mean. <laughs> OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Brazil. Remember, we're looking for a really obscure really answer that <laughs> no one will have thought of. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brazil. Not bad. That means 79 of our 100 people said Brazil. That gives Joe and James a worryingly high score of 79 to kick off our third round. Jamie, what are you going to say? We are looking for FIFA World Cup winners and runners-up. Well, this is more my domain, but I'm hoping I'm, I'm not taking too much of a risk by saying, as it were, then Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Czechoslovakia. It's a correct answer. Down it comes. It's good. Very good. It's almost the best. That means only two of our 100 people said Czechoslovakia. That puts Jamie and David into a promising lead at this early stage. On to Matt. What are you going to say? We are looking for FIFA World Cup winners and runners-up. I am going to go for Uruguay. 
Uruguay. Okay, let's see how many of our 100 people said Uruguay. It's good. It's another good one. That means 23 of our 100 people said Uruguay, and we are now halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. David and Jamie looking fantastic there on a low score of two. James and Joe looking very vulnerable there on 79. You've got to score as low as you possibly can on the next pass and hope everyone else scores high. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? We are looking for FIFA World Cup winners and runners-up. Dave, you are currently on 23. James and Joe riding high at 79. To avoid overtaking them and becoming the new high scorers, you have to score 55 or less. Yep, I'm going to go for West Germany. There is your red line coming in now. Below that red line and you are definitely through to the next round. Above that red line you become the high scorers and risk being eliminated at the end of the round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said West Germany. Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven of our 100 people said West Germany. That takes your total up to around 100. You are now the high scorers. You've got to hope everyone else scores high. Richard, West Germany. Yeah, Germany and West Germany have appeared in the, uh, the World Cup final depressing seven times. Uh, the bad news being they won it three times. The better news being they lost it four times. <laughs> <laughs> OK, on to our next pair. David, you are our low scorers at the moment on two. The high scorers are Dave and Matt on 100. To avoid overtaking them and becoming the high scorers, you have to score 97 or less. What are you going to say? France. You're going to say France. OK, how many of our 100 people said France? You're safe. Good enough. That means 62 of our 100 people said France. That takes your total to 64. You are definitely in the next round. OK, James and Joe. We are looking for FIFA World Cup winners and runners-up. Football is not one of my strongest suits. I'm more a, a rugby man. But uh, I've, I've got to take a bit of a risk, really. So I'm going to guess at Holland. You're going to guess at Holland. If it scores 20 or less, you will be going through to the next round. If it scores over 20, then I'm afraid you will be leaving at the end of this round. There is your red line. You have to be below there to remain in the game. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Holland. It's a correct answer. Oh. That means 30 of our 100 people said Holland, which brings your total up to 109. So at the end of round three, the losing pair with the highest score is James and Joe. Bad luck. Not your strongest suit, as you'd said. Had it been rugby, and I still would have done really badly. <laughs> should have still said Brazil. Well, it was still pretty close in the end. Only nine points in it between the, the two pairs. Um, Richard, what should they have said? Give them some, some ideas. Well, there, were, there were no pointless answers, but there were three fairly obscure ones. Jamie gave us actually the best answer you possibly could, which, was, uh, which is Czechoslovakia, who were the runners-up in 1934 and 1962. Uh, Hungary, who were the runners-up twice as well. That was in 1938 and 1954 and Sweden, who lost in the final to uh, Brazil in 1958. So none of those teams won it, which is why they're slightly more obscure. Let's have a look at the top answers. You, a couple of these answers may be familiar already from uh, what we've just seen. Third place was England. Surprisingly, you think they might be the worst answer, but just 74. Uh, Dave, you gave us Germany, West Germany. They were second, and the worst answer of all, though it's not, you know, it wasn't 100 points, was it? It was, uh, it was Joe's Brazil, five times winners. Well, thanks, Richard. OK, James and Joe, you have wasted one of your chances to get through to the Pointless final, so we have to say goodbye to you for today. But we'll see you next time for your final chance. Thank you so much for playing. Great to have you on the show. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So well done, Matt and Dave, David and Jamie. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at £1,250. <laughs> OK, here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take it in turns to give me an answer, and you'll each have an equal number of turns. 
The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So as always, to stay in the game, you want to come up with those facts and figures that everyone else forgets and score as few points as possible. David and Jamie, you performed best over the previous three rounds, so not only do you get to decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose the topic. And you get to choose between British politics or the monarchy. Yeah, well, go first. Yeah. British politics, please. British politics, and would you like to go first or second? We'll go first, please. And you'll go first. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many parties that won seats at the 2005 general election as they could. Yeah, Richard, we really need your elaboration here, I think. Uh, we are essentially looking for any political party uh, who won a seat at the 2005 general election. Independents don't count, but there are 10 political parties who won seats at the 2005 general election. OK. Now, remember, you don't want to go over 100, so you want to score the lowest number of points each time. What are those British political parties in the 2005 election that none of our 100 people gave? Right, David and Jamie, you wanted to go first? Oh, go on. Yes, go on then. Yeah. Um, we're going to go for Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sinn Féin. That's a correct answer. Very good. Good answer. That means 10 of our 100 people said Sinn Féin. Matt and Dave, your first answer, please. Um, Plaid Cymru? You are going to go with Plaid Cymru. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Plaid Cymru. That's another good one. That's the same Very good indeed. That means 11 of our 100 people said Plaid Cymru. That means... After one answer each, the scores are 11 to Matt and Dave and 10 to David and Jamie. It's very close. Now, David and Jamie, you need to be very careful now because your next answer could possibly take you over 100 points and you could risk leaving the game. So your next answer needs to score 90 or less. We are looking for British political parties in the 2005 election. We've got a very, very dodgy one, but we're not, we're not going to go for just yet. Uh, so we'll go for the Scottish National Party. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said the Scottish National Party. Good. You're safe. That means 31 of our 100 people said the Scottish National Party. That takes your score to 41 after your second answer. Matt and Dave, your second answer, please. I'm not entirely convinced they won seats at the election. Um, but I'm going to go for what I think is best. Uh, the Ulster Unionist Party. The Ulster Unionist Party. You are currently on 11. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 89 or less with this. The Ulster Unionist Party, there is the red line. You have to be below that red line to avoid going over 100. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Ulster Unionist Party. Good. Very good. That means five of our 100 people said the Ulster Unionist Party. After your second answer, that takes your score to 16. So two answers apiece. David and Jamie are on 41. Matt and Dave are on 16. We are looking for British political parties in the 2005 election. David and Jamie, your third answer, please. Oh, we need to, need to take the risk after the answer the guys are given. Um, I think George Galloway stood as the Liberty Party. So we'll go for that. The Liberty Party. Yeah. You're currently on 41. You have to score 59 or less with this answer. If it is incorrect, of course, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Liberty Party. Sorry, dear. Ah! Unfortunately, that was an incorrect answer, and that scores you 100 points, taking your total up to 141. Matt and Dave, normally we'd ask you to give us another answer so that both teams have had an equal number of turns, but you've scored so few points, and David and Jamie are now so far ahead on 141 that 
even your maximum score wouldn't overtake their high score. So you are through to the pointless final. <laughs> Uh, David and Jamie, though, that was tough. I, th I thought that might be a pointless there. Well, that's what we we're going for. Oh, well, Richard, put us out of our misery. Well, George Galloway did win Bethnal Green and Bow in 2005, yeah. but for the respect. 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 I knew it were one word. And even worse than that, res the respect party was actually a pointless answer. And, of course, pointless answers are those answers that none of our hundred people gave. Uh, there were a couple of other uh, obscure ones, uh, again from Northern Ireland. The, uh, the SDLP, the Social Democratic uh, and Labour Party, would have got you uh, one point. And the, uh, the DUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, would have got you three. Let's take a look at the worst answers you could have given. Uh, in third, as always, uh, it, was the, <laughs> it was the Lib Dems with 90. But uh, in second place was the Conservatives. And uh, most of all, with, uh, with 99, it was the Labour Party. It's the worst answer you could have given. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, David and Jamie, you've wasted one of your chances to get to the pointless final, so we have to say goodbye for today. But we will see you next time for your last chance. Thank you so much for playing. Thanks. Thank but for Matt and Dave, it's time for our pointless final. So congratulations, Matt and Dave. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,250. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. It's something only one person has done today, so let's hope you can find one more. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. You can go for European politics, Australian movie stars or golf? <laughs> is that funny? Well, not golf. Not it? golf. Not golf. One of first. What do you think? European politics. European politics. European yeah. politics, a bit close to home. Yep. European politics. Let's find out what the question is. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many European countries with a president as they could. Richard. Yeah, quite tricky this, I think. Uh, we're looking for any country, either wholly or even partly in Europe, which has a single president as its uh, head of state. As always, by a country, we're talking about a, a member of the UN that's a sovereign state. Right, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds begins now. Um, OK, well, it's not going to be France. Um, and France has right. got a president. Yeah. yeah, it's got a president, but I'm saying it's going to be too popular. Uh, German, Germany's got a chancellor, Angela Merkel. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know uh, many more, but I think if we pick some relatively obscure European countries. <laughs> well, it's not going to be those countries that have got monarchy, so we're going to rule out. Rule right. out Spain? Like, yeah, rule out like Spain mm. and some of the, um, the Nordic states. Yeah. Like um, Norway, Sweden. Yeah. Denmark, yep. Holland. Yep. 30 seconds. They're all going. 30 seconds? Crikey. Um, <laughs> think of three. I think um, smaller Eastern, Euro Eastern European. Mm, I think Latvia's got a prime minister. I'm trying to think of Eastern Europe. Uh, oh, I can't think of 15 Just go seconds. for like Greece. Slovakia, Greece. Slovakia, Greece. Um, and Austria. Yes. Yeah. OK, your time is up. We are looking for European countries with a president. What are the three answers you're going to go for? We're very unhopeful about these. Uh, Slovakia, Austria and Greece. Slovakia, Austria and Greece. OK. These are the three answers you've chosen in the hope of finding a pointless answer to win the jackpot of £1,250. OK, let's try your first answer, Slovakia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Slovakia. Just to remind you, this has to be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot. Slovakia. Oh, it exists. OK, it exists. That's half the battle. This is for the jackpot of £1,250. It's good! Oh! 
Fantastic. Ah, it's okay. just not good enough. Six of our 100 people said that, so unfortunately that is not a pointless answer. Now, you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. We are looking for European countries with a president. Let's look at your next answer. Austria. Austria. Are you hopeful for Austria? 50-50 on that one, not sure. OK, this has to be a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Austria. That's a correct answer. £1,250 are riding on this. Down it goes. Another good but not Another far good enough. enough. I'm sorry, 14 of our 100 people gave that answer, so it is also not a pointless answer. You only have one final chance left to win today's jackpot. We are looking for European countries with a president. This has to be a pointless answer. Greece is your final answer. All your hope now rests in Greece. <laughs> Let's hope none of our 100 people said Greece. Well, it's correct. £1,250 could be in it for you. It has to be a pointless answer. Oh. Oh, I <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £1,250. However, you do get to take home our pointless trophy. <laughs> that was a tough category, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was really tough. Um, any other ideas? I'm now thinking Slovenia. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the Slows. Mm -hmm. Richard. <laughs> Put them out of their misery. Yeah, I thought that's really unlucky. You've been great contestants for, for, for two shows. You really have, like, on, on uh, category after category. This is a very, very tough one, I think. If you had said Slovenia, you'd be even more gutted because it won. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I'm might have broken your hearts. Uh, really, really tough category, which I shall now prove to you by showing you the six pointless answers. Uh, they were Armenia, Azerbaijan, Cyprus. I can't believe no one, no one knows Azerbaijan has a president. <laughs> What are we teaching our kids? <laughs> uh, so, and there's, there's, there's three others. There are only six pointless answers. Kazakhstan, of course, Moldova, Moldova yeah, and uh, Montenegro. So a really, really tough category. That is a tough category. If you've got any of those at home, congratulations. Well, bad luck. As Richard says, you have been fantastic contestants. So thank you so much for playing. Goodbye to you and thanks. <laughs> So nobody has won our jackpot today. It therefore rolls over again, which means next time we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>